Hi everybody, this is Steve. This is another video in the series about how to make generative art. In this video, we're going to be looking at vertex and curved vertex, which can be used to make custom shapes. I've got a number of examples I'm gonna go over and all of these will be linked in the video description. I'm not gonna do most of these from scratch. So here's my first example uh, to make a simple vertex shape. All of the shape sides are straight. So they're not curved like this example. So if you want curved sides, you use curved vertex. If you want straight sides, you use vertex. And you can't mix the two. To start your custom shape, you need to call the begin shape function. And to end your custom shape, you need the end shape function. And in between are vertexes with x, y positions. So this first x, y position 100, 100 is here and then this one is going around in a clockwise direction. So this one down here, 200, 340, is right here. I don't use vertex a lot in my generative art. I use curved vertex quite a bit. So we're going to move on to the curved vertex examples. So here we have the same points as in this example, but in this example we're using curved vertex instead of vertex. There's also one other difference is in curved vertex, you have an anchor point at the beginning and at the end. The anchor point is a little weird. You can try playing with it. I tend to just double up on the point at the beginning and at the end. So I use the same X, Y position twice at the beginning and twice at the end. Another thing you can do with curved vertex is with the end shape, you have an option to close the shape and I can get rid of this and you'll see what happens. So this is the same XY points and I'm still using 200, 340, which is down here, but now 200, 340 is an anchor point. It's not actually a point along here. So like I said, that's a little weird, but if I make my last point, the 100, 100 point like this, then I get this. And if I make this one my last point, then I get this, which is the same as the close that I had in here earlier. Notice I'm doubling up with the XY position at the very end of this curved vertex. Let's move on to example two. So here I've added some sliders at the bottom so you can see what happens with a curved vertex as I move this point and this point. But let's just see what happens when I move this point back and forth and up and down. And then I can move this point back and forth and this point up and down. Now one of the things that's happening in this example is we're starting with zero, zero right here instead of up here. And we've done that by translating down here. Translating is something we're gonna talk about in the next video. It's very powerful, but I'm just mentioning it here because I am translating. So I've got my curved vertex here but I've got another curved vertex that I could bring in and I'm gonna uncomment this and you'll see it's a mirror image of this one. So since I've translated this right here is zero on my canvas for height. Uh, so down here is a positive height and going up here is a negative height. So what I've done is in this curved vertex, it's a positive Y2 and Y3 in this curved vertex, it's a negative y2 and y3. So as I move this back and forth, it mirrors it. And as you might imagine, you can use this to draw a leaf shape. So just to be clear, this one makes two separate curved vertexes, one for the bottom, one for the top. And notice that there is a point on the right side. This example, example number three, is also using a curved vertex. I've also got sliders, but there's one difference. Instead of there being two curved vertexes, I've got one curved vertex. It starts here, goes down here, and then this is a middle point, and then it continues up here and ends down here. So when I do that, then this end point, instead of being pointy, it's curved. Now I also wanna point out though, what happens if these two points get too close together. Watch what happens. So that would not be a good looking leaf. So you wanna make sure if you're gonna do leaves 
that this point is kind of far away from this point. You don't want them too close to each other. Now here's the second example uh, with two curved vertexes mirrored. But what I've done with this one is to transform it into a generative leaf maker. It doesn't have the sliders with this one. So you can see that the x2, y2, x3, y3, which are these two points, are being generated randomly. And if I hit go, I get different shapes. Now some of these are a little weird, like this one. So we could fiddle with these random numbers to make sure that we get shapes that make sense. But I'll leave that the way it is. And I'm gonna go now to example 3B, which is the one curve vertex that I showed you with the sliders. And now this one has no sliders and it has randomness uh, for determining the points. So I'll hit go here and you can see different shapes. And again, you could modify these points in the middle right here and here to make sure that you get shapes that make sense. When we get to translating and rotating in the next video, you'll see that this is more powerful than it seems at the moment. Now we'll move on to this example. And instead of making a leaf, I want to make a curve that goes across the screen. Imagine you have one color from a color palette as the background and a second color from the color palette as a curve here. Now right now I've got the curve vertex showing on the sides so that you can see what I'm doing. But what we want to do is move these points, this one, this one, this one, and this one, off the side of the screen. And we also want to make these two points generative so that they go up and down, changing this curve. Uh, I could change this Y2, which is this point right here, that's the height, uh, to 120, and it goes way up here. Uh, I could do 320, whoops, 320, and it goes way down here. Actually, let's make all of these scale with the size of the canvas. So our Y1 is at height times 0 0.5, and the Y4 at the end is also at height times 0 0.5, and the X1, that was the position on the left here, uh, we'll make that negative width times 0 0.1, and that'll put it just to the left of the screen edge. Then this one, which is at the edge of the screen on this side, we'll make width times 1.1, and that'll put it just to the edge on this side of the screen. So let's just see what that looks like. There we go. Now we wanna move these two points off the edge going this way. So those two points are 0.5 and 6, and we'll move this Great, now all we've got left are these two points. Now the X2 and the X3, I wanna keep these where they are. You could have maybe three points, one in the middle, one over here and one over here, but for now I'll just have these two points. Is this a third of the way into the canvas? I think it's a third of the way. So let's do this one at width times 0.33. Yeah, same place, and then we'll do this one at width times 0 0.67. Very good. And now this is the only two then that we need to randomize. So let's do this point, the height of this point, at random height times 0 0.3, say, and height times 0 0.7. We'll start with that. And let's just see what we get with that. That might be okay. And let's do this one the same. We'll just copy this down to here. All right, and then we'll hit go a few times and see what kind of curves we get. There we go. We got a generative curve going across the screen. Very nice. So I'll save this new version of this. For this last example, I've created a wavy band that goes through the canvas. If I hit go, you'll see what that does. Before the curve had six points, so the first four points are the same. And before the curve had a five down here and a six down here, now it's got eight points. 
and these points here are the height of these points plus some random amount added to that. So if we look at the code, this part is the same as it was before until we get to points five, six, seven, and eight, the height of those, I'm adding a random height times 0 0.1 comma height times 0 0.2. Also, I should say another way of doing this that is a little easier actually, is I could do height times random 0 0.1 comma 0 0.2 and that's a little shorter then I don't have to write height twice the curve vertex is the same as it was before except I've added a couple of points in the next video we're going to learn about translate and rotate which is going to enable us to take a curve like this and make it turn and be diagonal or be up and down whatever we want and there are also some other powerful things we can do like making flower petals that go all the way around. So uh, if you like this video, you can give it a like, et cetera, et cetera. Comments are always welcome. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.